Let me summarize, yeah. Chris. Although you have spoken and given a lot of examples with uh, exercise, yeah, this uh, incremental is not only fitness, but fitness is a part of it. If uh, yeah. the individual chooses to, yes, yeah. You also said that the push that you got to start incremental is because you did uh, have some challenges with uh, your mel- mental wellness. Yeah. So this is a holistic program. Yeah. So the idea is, and and again, look, you know, this this is. I'm not. Um, I've never hugged a tree. You know, I'm 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 I. You know, I, I I like crystals. Crystals are nice to look at, but you know that's it as far as I'm concerned. This is about this is a business for me, okay. And and what I want to do is help other people's businesses. Now, my experience is. You have a happy, healthy, engaged workforce, and you get <coughs> great Excuse results. Right? If you you can you can have a, a, a you know a profitable business, and the people aren't engaged and they're not happy and they're not healthy. But how much better would your business be if those people were happy, healthy, engaged? Right. And again, I think it comes down, you've got to look at everything, you know, you build things on foundations, right? And the foundations are really, really strong, okay, or they're not. And if they're not, you're going to run into trouble at some point. So for me, the the idea behind incremental, and, and I do want to open it up at some point to individuals. Um, that's one of the ideas uh, running around in my head at the moment is how do I do that? But for the time being, for the launch and how it, it initially will, will work, is that this is about helping businesses be better. Mm. Yeah. Because, you know, businesses are a spectrum like everything. You know, some businesses are great, some businesses aren't, most of them sit in the middle, you know, but a little improvement could be, you know, could result in a big financial improvement. And so the idea within incremental is that you look at the individuals within your workplace. And you look at the workplace and the environment that you've created and, you know, the leadership team that you have and, you know, is everybody pulling in the same direction? Well, you know, if they're not, why are they not? Right. And, and I genuinely believe that, that a lot of the time issues inside of work are related to things outside of work as are things outside of work related to things inside of work i know like you know i mean i've had difficult conversations with people in work i i can't i'm not one of those people who can leave it at the door you know i go home i'm irritated you know and that you know, uh my son sees that or my wife sees that and they think it's you know i'm irritated at them and then that builds up into you know or or i've had a you know, a bad morning at home and going to work and I've, you know, I'm not focused and I'm not as productive as I could be. It's not to say that the businesses that I've worked in, I mean, all the businesses, as far as I'm aware of the, that I've worked in, have been profitable businesses, right? But could they be better? Of course. And would it, you know, for, for what could amount to a very minimal investment in your people, and I think this is one of the things that businesses, you know, are getting on board with. And I think are going to need to get on board with more and more as, as the years go by. Is this idea that, you know, your people are the thing. They are the ones who interact with the, cu- with the customer, you know, on, on whatever level that might be. Now, if they are not happy, how good is that interaction going to be? Or, you know, compared to if they were happy. So I think, you know, that's the thing for me is we look holistically at the individual, but we give the individual the power, give the individual the choice. What are the things that are important to you right now? What's the thing that's really important to the leadership team, to the owners of the business? You know, what are the things that are important? Okay, if it's, you know, we want to be more productive. Well, who's, what's the metric What's the thing behind productivity? You're not, if you don't have a productive business, what is that? That's your workforce. Your workforce is not productive. So then you need to look at your workforce, right? Now, I don't know about you, but, you know, somebody's boot on my neck never makes me feel like I want to do something for them, go above and beyond, you know, work harder, or, you know, throw in an idea about how things might be improved. 
I have somebody who respects me, who sees my value, recognizes my value to the business. I'm loyal to for life, right? So for me, I think, you know, a lot of businesses are going to have to take a real hard look at, you know, are we happy with just being who we are? Or, are, or would we be happier if the business improved? And I think it, for any business to improve, you have to look at your workforce mm -hmm. and say, right, those are the things that, you know, we have control over. Right? What is that serenity prayer, isn't it? From, you know, you, you have the the courage to change the things that can be changed and uh, you know, the wisdom to see the difference or whatever it is. Um, but I think you, you've you got to look at the workforce and you've got to say, how do we make these people more engaged in what they're doing, more productive, more committed to the company's vision? Yeah, I mean... I look at some of the companies I've worked for, didn't have, you know, I didn't know what their vision was other than, you know, to get more money. But, I mean, it's like, I want to be a bit fitter. I want more money. Well, you know, what does that mean? You, know, you get another dirham, you're a bit richer. Right? So that's, that's the thing for me with incremental. It's this idea that by focusing on, on the workforce and th through incremental change, through these, you know, these ideas of atomic habits and, and the, you know, the Kaizen theory and, and uh, process, you know, you take small steps because I had a really interesting conversation with a guy called Andy Fieldhouse who's a, a team building expert uh, over here. And he was saying that he, he, he drew out this graph for me. It was like uh, the forgetful curve. So like, you know, you know, when you learn something, you know it, right? And then over time, unless you use it, just, you know, to the point where you barely know any of it anymore, right? So if you can reinforce what you know, little, 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 it doesn't drop, it stays you keep that knowledge and i think you know it's very true for everything is you 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 need to pay attention to the things that are important to you at that moment in time you cannot optimize everything all the time right it's just not possible i don't believe but and and that's why you know the kind of incremental model is something that that what i want to do is you know is do these programs and and you know and i i i do kind of half days and, and full days and, and to give people a, a sense of it. But you know, the program itself, for me, it's something you could do the rest of your life. You know, and what, we, what we, we'll be doing is, is uh, you know, for the companies that, that are signed up or that are committed to it, you know, you build champions into the workplace. So somebody starts to champion this so that it can continue. Actually, unlike life, because life has a, you know, dependent on your religious views, but life has a stop point. Yeah, at, at some point you stop living this life, but in between there, everything is constantly changing, constantly changing. The body you had seven years ago is not the same body you have now. Like on a cellular level, everything's changed, right? So, you know, and I think the what I want to do with with incremental and the way that I want to kind of get people committed to it is it's like it's not we're not on a it's not the end point you know the goal's great you need something to focus on but you know it's the little steps and when you're there or maybe even before you get there you realize actually that's not the thing that was most important to me now this is the thing that's more important to me so how do I get to there or you know actually I've got to there I'm happy with there you know I'm going to do enough to maintain like you know with with fitness like it's so much easier to maintain than it is to to get to there you know so i'm happy with that one i'm just going to keep that one ticking over and now i'm going to focus on something else yeah but it's what is it that's important to you right now what are the what are the areas of friction for you in your life what are the the things that you know if you could make them better you would make them better if you had the support structure in place how you know what would you do and that's the thing. The support structure is there, you know, because, and, and, and genuinely it is, unless you are wholly alone 
in the world. You know, and, and this is one of the big things for me. I mean, one of my big focus points for this year has been asking for help. Because I'm terrible at asking for help. You know, I've, I've, I've spent most of my life thinking I should be able to do everything by myself. And it's ridiculous. Utterly, utterly ridiculous. Because no one can do, you know, anything. But you, let me put this, you can't even get dressed by yourself, right? Because somebody else had to make the clothes. Right, so unless you've made your clothes, I guess some people might have done. Um, but you you get the point, right? It's it's everything is is with support, and and that's what I want incremental to be. I want incremental to make businesses better by making people better in the way they see or they perceive better. And it is all about perspective, right? Everything's about perspective. Okay? You are your thoughts. What you think you are, you know, that's what you'll become. Um, you know, I've, I've seen this so many times, like me personally, like, you know, and I could, the amount of stories where I'm like, I've told myself this story and, I, and now I believe it and now this is who I am. You know, I told myself for years I was rubbish with money. It's what I didn't have any savings. I used to spend all my money and was constantly scrabbling around at the end of the month, right? But it's, you know, it's a story that I tell myself, you know, and, there, and then you just act out that story. So if you tell yourself, well, actually, I'm really good at, you know, I'm good, I can, I can save money. I, save, I can save a bit of money every month. You might only save a little bit, but you're still saving money, you know, and... It, it for me, it, you know, and and I don't know, maybe I'm in a privileged position, but I don't, I don't, you know, I think it's again, it's perspective, you know. Like we said before about getting fit, you know, it doesn't mean anything. Like, yes, I'm fit, right? but what does that mean? Like, I keep myself in check. Like, we could, we could, you know, thank my parents for how I look now. Or we could thank the work that I've put in. Or it could be a combination of, of all of it. Um, you know, there'll be lots of people who look at me and go, you were a personal trainer. <laughs> you don't look like a personal trainer. And that's fine. Like, you know, for a lot of people, I don't look like a personal trainer. I was, you know, I mean, I'm still qualified, so I am. <laughs> but But I think it's this whole thing of, you know, everything is connected can't optimize everything but you can optimize some things but you have to pay attention and you have to be present within them 